Hey guys, welcome to BSL Season 12 Chobo League. This is the round of four, aka the semifinal upper right hand corner. We have Rancor starting as the yellow Zerg bottom right hand corner. We have Grass starting, actually I'm gonna do a color swap. Because of that gray bottom right hand corner, we have Grass starting as the blue Protoss, and now Rancor in the very stylish Zerg red. This is on Polypoid, and whoever wins this moves to the Chobo League Finals. And I am, I think I'm gonna favor Rancor here. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Grast had the walkover last round. He played solid matches all the way to this stage, but Rancor has looked absolutely unstoppable and has looked particularly good, in my opinion, in his ZVP. On Polypoid, we'll see how it goes. I know that the meta has been more... I mean, Crazy Zerg's been popular these days. I don't know if that's been popular at this level of play also. This is from a while ago. Uh, Grast, interesting, oh, he's doing this action again, where he's putting that pylon up on the high ground so he can potentially put... So this is this is the sneaky pylon where he can put the gateway down below and potentially put another gateway up above and kind of hide that action potentially. We'll see how he plays that out. Probe actually moving down, it looks like he's trying to catch this Overlord out of position. And now that he sees that the Overlord's not there, it looks like he's bringing that Probe Scout back. Going to go ahead and drop the gateway and move and start scouting north. I like his decision to do that. I'm wondering if he's going to go for a cross position scout, which does lead me to believe he's going to opt for that two gate play. Now, my question is, is does, yeah, it look, looks like he is going to come across Rancor's base. Unfortunately for him, it looks like Rancor has opted for an overpool build. I think that was a spawning pool on 10, maybe 11. Didn't catch quite the time. But point being, he's going to have an earlier pool out to deal with initial zealot pressure. Rancor moving his drone scout out, and he's certainly going to go south, and there is that second gateway up on the high ground. Now the question is, is does this drone commit all the way to going into the main to see that second gateway being built? And does Rancor save Larva to get sufficient Zerglings? And also, it can be really important to get that second hatchery down just so you have Larva to work with. Grass going ahead and doing some interruption here with this probe first, sell it is on the way. Pylon right there to pretend it's a Nexus? I'm not sure. Oh, and no, Rancor... He's falling for it. He went, he sees the gateway, now he's pulling back, and I don't know if he realizes he's up against two gate pressure. He is producing that initial six Zerglings. He's also got that hatchery out, and did he click? Did he click this to see that it was just a pylon or not, a, and not a Nexus? Because he might have thought, okay, this is maybe a Nexus first build. He is producing additional Zerglings. Extractor being built. Looks like he's going after the initial probe. So I think Grasp through some Wiles and Trickery might have caught Rancor off guard, at least as far as what the initial build is. And I'm not going to say that's immediately going to result in a win. Looks like the Zerglings were able to clean up that probe scout. More Zerglings being produced, but this is a drone to follow, and he really needed to actually just be producing raw Zerglings to fight these Zealots out. Now, here's the question. Is, does the Zealot... Okay, the Zealots hide into the corner. If it can get... If it can just bide some time, actually... And make its way back. This initial zealot getting just absolutely ransacked, completely surrounded. Grass doing a good job of keeping it alive, buying it, sell, buying it some time while that second and third zealot come in to join the fray. But now that second and third zealot, they're going to turn around and fight. This is the moment Rancor has to realize that he's up against a different build and continue to produce a lot of Zerglings. But I take it back. Some nice micromanagement overall from Rancor. And that was, wow, that was actually fantastic micromanagement because that was what? I think that was eight Zerglings taking down three Zealots. Well played on his part. So here I thought he was going to need additional Zerglings to fight that back. Maybe I'm off on that, but I think that was just fantastic micromanagement. Zealot now on the front, and there was still a handful of Zerglings. I'm wondering if Grass just dropped the ball there, but yeah, usually three Zerglings. So usually you can you can have three Zerglings beat one Zealot, but usually you need to do a lot of micro in there. But that was what? I think it was just eight Zerglings beating three Zealots. Granted, that first Zealot was highly damaged, and I think that played a big factor uh, there. So now, Grass in a bit of trouble. I'm wondering if he's actually blockaded his own natural expansion a bit. We'll see momentarily. I think that pylon might be in the way. So he's in a lot of trouble. He's going to have to take his own forward pylon down, potentially. In the meantime, Rancor has gone up to three ba uh, three hatcheries. He's actually gotten a single move to his, just a single drone on gas with this Hydralis den here in the background. He is getting Hydra speed. And I have seen this uh, here and there. It look, looks, looks like he is going to move at least two drones on there, which is to go a little bit more mineral heavy in the early game to sneak a few more, a, few, a little bit more out. Looks like he has dropped his hunting colony, realizing that he's going up against early zealot pressure. A couple more zerglings flooding down. And I think he's going to need more. He's going to need at least another something colony to go ahead and defend this. I did like his option, maybe even a third, actually, depending. The zerglings pulling back. 
Rask continue to press this. The Zealot working on that pylon on the front door so he can go ahead and get his natural expansion up. The hatchery is going to be there with a pseudo sim city, and some more Zerglings are being produced, but this is a very much a skeleton crew to defend against all of these Zealots. The Zealots going in, getting the surround on the Sunken Colony. The Zerglings trying to re-engage. Some nice micro on grass to re-engage right there. But this is now four Zealots versus two Zerglings. Certainly going to get a lot of drone kills, but Grast actually splitting his Zealots up once again. One Zealot working on that hatchery to the north. It looks like the second going to go ahead and work on that drone line. So at the very least, even though he's delayed that natural expansion, he is going to be able to hurt a bit of Rancor's economy with the Zealot attack in that natural expansion. Additional Zerglings going ahead and getting this around. But it looks like, okay, this time Grast doing a much better job micromanaging. And so additional Zerglings getting wiped out and that hatchery being pummeled. At the very, I don't think he's going to be able to get a hatchery out of this. But at the very least, he's delaying additional mining time for Rancor. He's forcing him to build more Zerglings. Nice micro right there pulling off the hurt Zergling. Not going to go ahead and pull into the corner. I don't know how much longer this is going to last. But this is a lot of Zergling and Rancor actually over committing with Zerglings as far as the follow cleanup. So this is allowing Grass to find some breathing room. Also took out a lot of drones and really slowed the economy down. For Rancor, but keep in mind, Grass still doesn't have his natural expansion up. Wild match thus far. Still doesn't have his natural expansion up. More Zealots moving forward. Some Zerglings flooding down to go ahead and engage them. The Zerglings going to go ahead and pull back momentarily. And Grass doing a good job of more or less forcing Rancor to play defensively rather than just going full economy, which is exactly what you want to do as a Protoss. It looks like he's going to go ahead and get a second cannon down just in case these Zerglings were opting to get more aggressive. He's actually managed to sneak. Two dark, so in the background, he's managed to get uh, Citadel of Dune Templar Tech in the midst of all this action. He also has a cannon in that back corner just in case Hive Tech was there. But it looks like Rancor just sitting at 13 drones is more or less sitting at 3-hatch three, three hatch Hydralisk instead. And there's no Overlord in the forward position. So these Dark Templar that are going to be out on the front momentarily are going to have free reign to go ahead and push this back. So Grass is going to feel very comfortable moving into the mid game. He's actually going to be ahead as far as overall uh, drone count. He's going to, or I should say worker count. He's going to be ahead economically he's really hurt rancor's economy so rancor is going to have trouble rebuilding in fact i don't even think he has an overlord currently at his well he has an overlord right there but he needs to be a little bit careful getting an overlord otherwise in position it looks like there is an overlord midfield that will allow these dark templar to hesitate it looks like this dark templar took a significant amount of damage but in the meantime psystorm is upgrading psystorm's upgrading rancor still hasn't taken a third gas He's still sitting on three hatch Hydra. He's just now starting to drone up again, but he's at basically half the drone count and his layer is only halfway finished. So everything right now, despite the rough opening for Rancor, is looking, in my opinion, in his favor. He's going to have Psystorm finished. He's going to have High Templar out there, hopefully in sizable numbers to go ahead and deal with this attack. He still has Dark Templar out, although he needs to be he needs to manage them a little bit. Looks like that Overlord is moving up. He's going to end up losing that Dark Templar. Looks like a second Dark Templar has managed to sneak into this natural expansion, going the far way around. The drone's trying to flee. That's one drone down. And again, Rancor's economy getting lambasted. He's nice play there by Rancor trying to draw those units, and that's going to force more units to be built in the main. It looks like the drone's transferring already four kills, five kills. Grasped in firm control of this match thus far, and another Overlord still not in position. The Larva being killed. And more gas being halted. Wow, Grast is just putting on a clinic thus far of how to harass a Zerg and obliterate his economy. Rancor just has not been able to get anything rolling. In the meantime, he's got level 1 weapons on the way, a bunch of Zealots on the ground. Uh, no High Templar yet, and that's actually what I wanted to kind of see to kind of cap this advantage, is having those High Templar in the mid-game. He does have his Corsair out, and he's starting to work on those Overlords. There's enough Hydralisks where that will... That's going to get repelled. This Overlord is going to be at high risk in the midfield, and that's going to allow those Dark Templar, if they're continued to be produced, to kind of control the mid-game. It looks like this Dark Templar has managed to couch and hide in this corner. And Rancor, even inside his base right here, trying to couch and hide a lot of these units, and just, you can almost feel the how frustrating this attack from Grast has been to him. He's moving, it looks like finally, losing some additional Zerglings to this Dark Templar before he was detected. Numenized Carapace is going to be upgraded momentarily, but Zealots are already on the way. And Rancor is still sitting at 21 drones, still hasn't taken a third gas, and is more or less still shelled up in his base. Oftentimes, it's okay to be shelled up as a Zerg if you're sitting on three bases and three gas at this stage of the match. But being... he's 20 supply down, is well behind in the worker count where he wants to be. It looks like range is upgrading, by the way, uh, to kind of 
do a pull-up. So Rancor really falling behind in this match. Overlord Speed is there to help protect against that Corsair Harass. It looks like Grass not committing those Zealots, particularly without Leg Speed upgraded and level 1 weapons, not there yet. Uh, but he's going to go ahead and check that 12 o'clock base. He's going to go ahead and make sure no additional expansions have been taken. And I think as soon as he sees that all of these bases are more or less empty... Ooh, High Templar now... It, I'm wondering if it's going to have enough energy once this attack force comes down there for Rancor. I think these Zealots might be sufficient to go ahead and repel it. The Hydralisks and Zerglings are being distracted. Want to try to engage and a probe right there denying. So the Corsair gets taken out by the Hydralisks down below. The probe is pushing that drone off at the 12 o'clock location. Grass continuing to macro up. He's got twice the supply of Rancor here in the mid-game. <clears throat> There's also roaming Zealots. Yeah, I think Grass... I'm not even sure you can believe the situation he's in. I think he's migrating all of these Zealots across the map just to make sure that he has managed to keep Rancor to two bases here in the midfield. A lot of High Templar out. I think there's only going to be one or two Psy Storms, though, available to deal with Rancor's incoming attack force. But critically, because these Zealots are out here, if they press down, they should be able to pin on, maybe pin these Hydralisks and Zerglings in and obliterate that army and put Rancor even further behind. Rancor grabbing two Evolution Chambers. He's going to try to do... I guess massive upgrades to follow this up. He has no semblance of map control. This Zealot at the 12 o'clock location that looks like has continued to deny that 12 o'clock base. Rancord needs to find additional expansion. <clears throat> Small mercies here that Grast has fallen a little bit behind in his macro and supply capped himself a little bit here. at the. But honestly, at 98 out of 98 supply is not the worst spot to be supply capped. Some Templar a little bit vulnerable moving out here, but... Layers up, and I think... I don't even know that Lurker Tech's been upgraded. <clears throat> Rancor dedicating everything to that 12 o'clock as Grast is moving out to go ahead and establish his mineral only. And it looks like Grast was also thinking... Well, he's got that pylon. Looks like he was maybe thinking about getting a little bit greedy and opening up the rest of that front door. Grast feeling strong enough that he's going to go ahead and place some pylons out of position and open his front door up a little bit. It's going to delay uh, his level 2 weapons upgrade a little bit, but he can afford to do that. So right now, everything's in Grass's favor. He can pretty much do whatever he wants. Rancor just wanting to survive at this stage, dropping additional sunken colonies, and maybe he'll try to drone behind this, but the thing is he's going to be droning and stuck effectively at two bases. He just feels a little bit discombobulated. He's waiting, it looks like, on Carapace and other upgrades. He is finally getting Zergling speed as well, so he's going to try to do it, it looks like, on tier 1.5 tech, effectively to try to win this. But against all this size storm, these level 1 up upgraded Zealots... The Dragoons that are already there. A bit of a whiff of a Psy Storm there for Grass, but he's got more Psy Storm in the bank to work with. You can see he's just, ooh, great Psy Storm there, catching on the Doodad. He even gets the Overlord, just, and there's no Dark Templar in the mix, but that is going to cause Rancor to think twice about re-engaging this army. And on top of that, Grass looks like he's starting to establish this bottom left-hand corner. So he's going to grab a guy. Oh, looks like he's also going to grab the 6 o'clock location. So he's expanding everywhere, which he can afford to do. He's also getting a shuttle to go ahead and do drops. It looks like, ooh, High Templar might get caught from behind here. Some Psy Storm over the Hydralisk. Oh, blanketing. Blanketing these Hydralisks and Electricity. Some great Psy Storms there from Grass, and that is obliterating the Hydralisks on the ground. And, honestly, and a Dark Templar is now joining this army with no Overlord overhead, so there's a single Hydralisk wondering what's happened to the rest of his brethren. And I would not be shocked if Rancor calls GG right there. To be honest, being that he's... I think he's a little bit despondent here in this match one at this stage. Because this match is well out of hand. Ooh, catching his own High Templar and Dark Templar, it looks like, on a little bit of that size storm. A handful of Hydalists trying to do something right there. But Rancor has been denied a third base, been denied a third gas. He's still sitting at 19 drones. In the meantime, Grast is capping... He's got a third base and another base in waiting. And he's got an army moral. Usually you see Zerg containing Protoss. This time we have Protoss containing uh, a Zerg. So a little bit of a. And in case that wasn't enough, we already have a, a Psy Storm waiting to drop on top of Rancor's face, more or less. So he's trying to send out a handful of Hydralisk attack to just evict the army that's on his front door. He's going against superior upgrades and a lot of Psy Storm even there. And there's GG from Rancor. So, oof, game one very much in Grass's favor and just putting on honestly a PVZ clinic right there as far as how to do an immense amount of harassment and ooh, I don't, I'm not sure that bodes well for Rancor's additional games. We'll see if Rancor can pull it back out 
uh, restabilize. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.